Let's look at the timeline of the major events that happened following the Big Bang. At the moment of the Big Bang, time started, and this was 13.7 billion years ago. At this time, all of the mass and all of the energy of the universe as we have it today was in the size of an atom. Now, it wasn't an atom, but it was the size of an atom. All of that mass energy was compressed. At the moment of the Big Bang, there was a violent explosion or expansion of all of this energy. Now at this time, the universe was pure energy. There was no matter yet, everything was energy. This expansion is known as inflation and it continues today. It was actually discovered by Edwin Hubble in 1929. At 10 to the negative six seconds, or one millionth of a second, this expansion began to slow a bit. And the fundamental forces of the universe began to appear. First there was gravity, which was first explained by Isaac Newton in 1665. And then all of the other fundamental forces, the strong force, the weak force, and the electromagnetic force began to appear. At one second, the first fundamental particles began to form. And they did this according to Einstein's famous equation of E equals mc squared. Now energy and matter are equivalent in the universe. And as that energy became cool enough, it formed into matter. And these first fundamental particles were quarks, neutrinos, electrons, and photons. There were no actual atoms in the universe yet. Now as these fundamental particles formed, the universe was still very, very hot. And so these particles were moving very, very fast. And they began to smash into each other and form protons and neutrons. Again, this was done according to Einstein's equation of E equals mc squared. That energy that was present at the beginning of the Big Bang began to freeze into matter. Three seconds after the Big Bang, the nuclei of atoms began to form. Now these are just the nuclei or the nucleus of atoms. They weren't full atoms, they were still missing their electrons. And the major atoms that formed were hydrogen, helium, and lithium, the three smallest atoms on our periodic table today. Now remember that these were not full atoms. They did not have electrons on them, so they were ions. This is because of how hot it was in the universe that those electrons could not attach to those protons and neutrons to form full atoms. This is also a key time in the formation of the universe and a key time where a big piece of evidence of the theory of the Big Bang comes into play. Scientists have been able to determine that the universe should have formed into about 75% hydrogen and about 25% helium. And as we look at the universe today, we can still see that this ratio is present. And this serves as one of the big key evidences of the Big Bang. We're now gonna jump to about 10,000 years after the Big Bang. And this is known as the radiation era. This is because at this time, there was a lot of different types of radiation, such as microwaves, X-rays, or ultraviolet rays. And all of these forms of radiation, including radio waves, were all over in the universe. And this is a result of how hot the universe was. Now all of this radiation caused the universe to be a giant glowing ball and we'll see how this comes into play later on in the formation of the universe and as an evidence of the Big Bang. Because it was so hot, and as we said before, full atoms could not form and that made it so there was all of this radiation swirling around in the universe. At about 300,000 years, the universe had continued to expand and continued to cool. And this marked the first time that we had full atoms in the universe. This is atoms both with nuclei and electrons around them. And the electrons that were in the universe first began to attach the ions that were formed about three seconds after the Big Bang. This also had an influence on how much radiation there was in the universe. At this time, that radiation that was there began to drop off dramatically. And this created a shell, essentially, in our universe that marks or displays that radiation that was present. This is known as the cosmic microwave background radiation, and this is a key evidence of the Big Bang Theory. This cosmic microwave background radiation, or the CMB, was first discovered in 1964. In 1990, a satellite called the Cosmic Background Explorer, or COBE, was the first object to be able to identify and collect data on the cosmic microwave background radiation. And it was used to confirm that the cosmic background radiation, or the CMB, was real and helped to support the theory of the Big Bang. As these full atoms formed about 300,000 years after the Big Bang, they kept that ratio of about 75% hydrogen and 25% helium. 
About 300 million years following the Big Bang, gravity began to magnify the irregularities in the density of matter distribution in the universe. This was another key thing that was discovered using the COBE satellite. These irregularities in the density of matter throughout the universe began to be clumped together through the force of gravity. As the force of gravity continued to pull more and more of these clumps together, there was eventually a formation of stars and galaxies. So this point of 300 million years after the Big Bang marks the first time that there were stars and galaxies in our universe. This was still about 12 to 15 billion years ago. So about 5 billion years ago, the sun was formed from a clump of gas in this area in the universe, and later a disk of gas and dust formed around that new star, which eventually led to the formation of the planets and all of the objects we have in our solar system today, including the Earth.